thank you for tuning in. Today we have here Bishop Bishop Von Devon Sr., um, who will be talking to us about his book, The God of Jesus Christ. Um, if you can go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself and your book. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I'd like to say good uh, afternoon here in, in Baltimore, Maryland. My name is Bishop Vaughn Devon Sr. I'm the pastor of Holy Ground Apostolic Faith Church. Uh, I've been pastoring now for 22 years. I've been in the ministry uh, for approximately close to 40 years altogether. Uh, I, this is my second book, The God of Jesus Christ. And, and uh, the first book, I used that like it was a forerunner. It was something that put me in the position of knowing uh, how to do the second book better than the first book. <laughs> it gave me the, the know-how, the first book. And, and this is the way God set it up to be because uh, the most uh, important thing about uh, the book is bringing understanding on who Jesus is. And it has other uh, chapters and categories pertaining to salvation. But my first chapter is to the Jew first, and of course the third chapter is also to the Gentile. But uh, God gave me the inspiration through a, a miracle that he uh, placed in my church uh, over uh, seven, eight years ago, and and uh, that gave me the inspiration. And it's in the book, and I give, I'll give the information out how they can see it for themselves. And that's the second chapter that is Believe It or Not. <laughs> because a lot of people, it's hard to uh, to really receive anything that is supernatural uh, in this day and time. But that gave me the inspiration, and I use my books. Also, I uh, I have uh, received a bachelor's and a master's degree in theology, and um, uh, and the Lord has blessed me uh, to do. A, some wonderful works in the city of Baltimore, and but we got a lot of work still to do, especially with all the things that is happening this day and time. Uh, this I'm praying that this book will reach not only to the Christian faith, but specifically the second book was geared to to, to touch also the Jewish uh, faith and the culture, and that's why the first chapter is geared to the Jew first, and and that's what God has inspired me uh, to write this second book. So I can put more emphasis, not only to Christians, but also to other faiths also to know who his son, Jesus Christ, really is. Yeah, and it's great that you were able to put your message out there. What is one thing that inspired you to begin the journey of writing this book? Um, I, it's made mention in the book is of divine intervention. Um, as uh, I was... Uh, looking at a broadcast, a religious broadcast of the Jewish voice. And I, this rabbi was on there and he gave emphasis pertaining to uh, about uh, the Jewish culture and how that they have a cross between, between you call the Messianic or the missionary Jews and the Orthodox Jews. And so one is trying to explain one thing to another and the Lord gave me a proper understanding of what this book was to do, was trying to be a mediator between the, those groups because gods have not forsaken the Jewish people. They, they still are his first fruits. <laughs> and even the Christian people knows that. So things are heading back towards their understanding. And that's why I have uh, in uh, the book the, the main chapter is uh, one that I use is Romans 11 chapter that blindness in part has happened to the children of Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles come in. God always worked on a time frame, a time frame for everything. And so God's got to bring a more understanding to the Jewish uh, culture of his son, Jesus Christ, because he sent his son to die. And he don't want his son to be mis, 
recognized or disrecognized for who he is. And just like I wouldn't want my son to be disregarded for who he is, that don't take nothing away from me. I'm dead. Whatever my son accomplished, I still get the glory. And that's what God wants uh, the world and those who have the confusion. Uh, that's dealing with not only Jews, but a lot of Christians. We want to bring understanding who Jesus is, that he is God's son, his only begotten son, like God said he was. And he wasn't God. He didn't became God or God became a man. Uh, my book will give direct understanding through scriptures, uh, directly proven on who Jesus is according to the scriptures because this is something God believes is important to him that he will know that he didn't send his son in this world to die in vain and he want his son to get the glory that he have received through the father but he want his son to get the glory through the mankind who he died for and so this is a uh, something that is very very important today because it seems like a lot of us then got off track on believing you know we used, the main scripture everybody used to use back in the days was john 3 16. everybody knew that scripture but it seemed like it's, it's fading away it seemed like it's fading away a lot now so i'm trying to bring it back for god so loved the world he gave his only begotten son and we got to recognize his son and i and in this, this day and time you can't just say it you got to explain it through the word of god mm -hmm. Now that we know you know, what inspired you to begin the, the journey of writing this book, um, with every journey, there's always difficulty. What would you say was a difficulty that you faced when writing this book? Well, it just so happened Phys physically, I had a mild stroke at the time I, I got the inspiration and the Lord put in my spirit and through the, the images, the, the miracle that he placed in and gave me that go ahead and but when you got to do something for God there always uh, uh, some type of opposition that is there to try to hinder you from doing what God called you to do but uh, with the grace of God I still had my stamina to be able to continue to study uh, able to research able to type and uh, I had support from my family and everything to that point. So I wasn't, like I said, it was a little mild stroke and, and uh, just having a mind to go forward because I had a little, uh, my left hand was kind of tense. And when I was to hit them keys, it was like pain going <laughs> in my fingers because I never uh, 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 witnessed that before in my body. But things is a lot better now, but I was able to persevere and continue with the work that God called me to do. And I, I, I'm thanking the Lord continuously that uh, everything that I needed, the Lord fed me through his spirit, through the spirit of God, which is uh, the Holy Ghost spirit was in me to lead me and guide me and to help me uh, with everything I stood in need of. Like I made mention, my first book, which is the Vaughn Code for the, for the Truth's Sake, that was my forerunner. So I, I, I had a, a more proper understanding how to write a book. I had in my mind what I didn't want to do the second time. And, and, and I had a guide, a guideline, you know, to help me this time because I done went through the cycle already with the first, which made it a lot easier. So I was able to fulfill uh, the obligation that was called for me to do. And I, I pray that uh, that's what it's about. Not about me, not about trying to be popular or anything. I just want God's truth to get forth that people may understand. Now the pandemic is, is on the scene. We can all say God is talking. You see what I'm saying? It's on time. He's an on time God. Things is working right in the time frame that God wants things to, 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 to be placed in. So I truly believe that this book is an on time uh, book for people to understand God is trying to give us a wake up call. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even with such difficulties that you face, you were able to put your message out there into the world for uh, people to read. What, what would you say is the main message that you would like your readers to take from your book? Uh, the main message is that uh, God's word is still 
uh, on the throne. Uh, as I have in, 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 on the back part of my introduction, that we are all is without an excuse. We all have to recognize, amen, that God created the heavens and the earth. He created man. He didn't leave us here to be in a desolate condition and to be without an answer to our existence. It's more to it than just coming in here and fulfilling our obligations for mankind, but God wants us to know our obligations towards him. Because when everything is said and done, when everything is over with, we still got to face a judgment that a man, that mama can't help us, daddy can't help us, a friend. We have to prepare for that while we're in time. You see, we prepare for eternity while we're in time. Because once we leave here, the Bible says, amen, it's appointed unto men once, just one time to die. But after this is the judgment. So we have to prepare ourselves right now, amen, for eternity. And that's what God wants us to understand. We're going to all spend eternity somewhere, but we got to understand he's calling for us to be obedient. And obedience, the Bible says, is better than a sacrifice. I know we can do a lot of things that's good and a lot of things that's uh, uh, being a good Samaritan, good uh, citizen and good person but God still has a word that we all have to live by because we have to know his will it's not about my will or your will or somebody else it's God's will that he wants to be done and if we know the scriptures uh, he has brought that uh, to the attention uh, from the beginning Adam and Eve he told them not to eat <laughs> from the beginning, God wanted his attention to be done. And when they went contrary to God's will, we find ourselves in the predicament that we're in now, uh, the sin nature. But God didn't leave us in this condition. He sent his son Jesus to get things back in order. But this is something up to us. We got to willingly, the Bible said that first must be a willing mind for somebody to want to know God's will because God is not gonna override nobody's will to make them come to him. You know, just like we're children, just like I have children. I don't want my child, he, my child wants something. I want my child to come to me. I want him to cry to me. I shouldn't have to pull him to get his attention. But this is the same thing, God the Father. He don't wanna pull us and force us to come to him. We should have in us whether we have uh, intellect or, or ignorance, he still put in us a consciousness state of mind to understand that there's more to life than just what we see. Because I don't care how you look at it, common sense will bring to your attention that man didn't put the moon up there. Man didn't put the sun up there. We have everything, like the Bible says, pertaining to life and godliness. Everything we need to survive is here, and it was here, and man had nothing to do with it. You know, so it's too perfect to be a mistake. You know, like they want evolution, they want the Big Bang Theory, but thank God that he left us also a witness by dispatching his spirit here on earth. And that is what uh, the apostles preached, that what Jesus preached, we must be born again. So God wants us to understand we must be born again, according to the word of God. And all a person got to do, like God said, like I found out, he said, seek and you shall find. I didn't know that scripture, but I was seeking. I was trying to find a better way of life because I was going through a lot of difficulties, you know, and in life. And I didn't want to be able to have hatred because people hated me. I still wanted to love, but I didn't have the power to love. I didn't have the power to be submissive. But when I got born again of the water and of the spirit, like the Bible says, it put a new nature in me and gave me love where hate was at. And I'm trying to bring that to the attention and, and the understanding that Jesus made that way. That's why Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. 
So, so in order to get that new nature, uh, uh, we have to come to Jesus. Yeah, I think it's such a great book, um, especially right now at such troubling times. I think, right. I think we tend to forget to help those around us and help, our, help ourselves as well. Um, so I think this is a great book for people to read at such troubling times. Yeah. For the readers that are interested in purchasing your book, where what are some places where they can purchase uh, this and your um, first Website. book? Yes, yes, ma'am. Well, my website is Bishop Devon Holy Ground.com. Bishop Devon Holy Ground.com. Amen. And it should be able to find it on Amazon. Amen. And and uh, uh and the other bookstores and also uh Authors Press. Amen. All they got to do is uh, Google up Authors Press or find information for Authors Press and they will sell it directly from there also. I also want to make mention because the controversy about one of the things, my book is the second chapter about the miracle images. And I got that on the YouTube in case people want to see it. Amen. They, I got it on there, believe it or not, because I had a lot of controversies from, I'm talking about from Christian standpoint and others. But that inspired me to be in this moment right now. Wouldn't for that, I wouldn't have never wrote the first book. This book went to college. I used my book for my dissertation. I use it for that purpose. And all because of those images came and it wasn't an overnight thing. It was no overnight something. I really had to pray fast and ask God. And that it can be found on the YouTube, in case they want to see it for themselves, Miracle Images for the Truth's Sake on the YouTube. Miracle images for the truth's sake on the YouTube. Is there any last thing that you would like uh, to say to your readers or to your future readers? Will I be able to read uh, the profile on the back of my book real quickly and to bring that? That's something it says because it explains so much at, at, at a nutshell, it explains so much about the book. It says, through divine intervention, the God of Jesus Christ was given by God to Bishop Devon to bring proper understanding to the Jews and Christians alike of the true identity of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, according to the scriptures. This God sent book serves the purpose on bringing recognition unto the people of God that the church and the Gentile dispensation is coming towards its end for the fulfillment of that which was spoken of and is now fully at hand. And it says that blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles become in. And that's in Romans 11 chapter verse 25. No one can escape God's truth, whether it be Jew or Gentile, rich, or poor, intelligent, or ignorant. The God of Jesus Christ gives an additional light to the messianic, a helping crossover for the orthodox, and a better understanding to the Christian believer. And he said unto me, seal not the sayings of the prophecy of the book, for the time is at hand, he that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And that's Revelations, the 22nd chapter, verses 10 and 11. So I like for that to be properly understood. So you guys heard it here. This is definitely a great book to check out in trolling times like this. Um, you can check it out Barnes and Nobles, uh, the his website and Authors Press website um, for those that do want to buy the book as well. Um, I believe it's in uh, audiobook as well. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Ebook. Yes. Sir. Um, so thank you so much for telling us such great things about your book and. Um, it's really inspiring that you were able to get your message out into the world for people to read and learn from. 
Thank um, you, sir. I, I truly thank you, uh, Mr. Romo. Thank you for the interview.